So in this section, we're going to uh, look at uh, different variations of uh, the aggregation function. So, so far, we have seen two types of aggregation. First, the local aggregation, where we aggregate the embeddings of a particular node, so locally, and this is a one-hop aggregation right here. So this happens at the node level. And we have also seen the global aggregation of the embeddings of a particular of all nodes uh, in a graph. And this will allow us to estimate the um, or learn the embedding of the whole graph, uh, HG. And this happens at the global level, at the graph level. OK, so we have two different types of aggregations, local uh, aggregation and global aggregation, particularly uh, if we want to do graph classification or regression or generation. So we have seen uh, different examples previously, but there are uh, this is a, an ongoing area of research. And here you can see that. For example, uh, we can use mean aggregation and different types of uh, normalized um, aggregation methods. So all of these methods that we're going to go over quickly uh, now are basically, um, they, they can be applied at a local level for aggregating uh, neighboring um, embeddings of a particular node, but also at the global level, if you want to collapse or map a whole graph onto a single uh, compact representation or embedding. So the first one is the mean aggregation. So, so far, uh, previously we have seen that to update the embedding of a particular node uh, from layer K to layer uh, K plus one, we use the aggregation rule. And the aggregation rule that we use is basically, uh, it basically sums up the embeddings of all neighbors HM and M are neighbors of node uh, N. Now here we uh, present a, a variant where we average the embedding. So instead of summing them up, we average them by uh, you know normalizing uh, using the number of uh, neighbors of node N right here. So this is a variant that allows us to create a normalized um, vector that is an average vector of all the embeddings of a particular node. So we will kind of simply average uh, these instead of uh, summing them up. So uh, the new GCN layer in this case um, will be updated in this way. So because we have used this aggregation rule, uh, we can easily um, you know, write it in the matrix format. And you can see that this, uh, this simply multiplies the adjacency matrix uh, for our uh, neighborhood aggregation, the first term right here, and uh, normalizes it by the degree of the node. So we divide by the degree of the node, and this is what we are doing in this operation right here. So you can, you can use a simple example. You can uh, create a simple graph like this and uh, index your nodes, and then uh, you can uh, write this down and the update rule using the uh, expanded form and using the matrix form. Now for the KIPF normal, uh, normalization, so here, as you guys have noticed previously, we have only taken into account the number, the degree of the node itself, degree of node N, okay? In this case, what we want to do, we want to uh, extend this to, uh, you know, the, the neighboring node. So we want to include the degree of the neighboring nodes. So this is the degree of the neighboring nodes, okay? So the logic behind this is that the information coming from nodes with a very large number of neighbors should be downweighted since they are many uh, there are many connections and they provide less unique information. So we want to diversify the information and uh, to do so, basically, we downweigh uh, the, um, the information coming from neighbors with lots of connections. OK, so uh, this happens by uh, multiplying, uh, dividing by the degree uh, of the uh, of the node or multiplying by the inverse. And uh, you guys can also see that this if you use a simple also graph, uh, a small graph, and you uh, you define uh, different embeddings here, you can easily. So let's call. Let's look for example at the update rule for this node n, and maybe we should connect it a bit more. So I'm going to add an edge here, and you can try this example uh, on this small graph and uh, compare. So let's let me put the um, embedding. So we have here the embeddings, right? And compare the uh, this formula, the expanded formula, with the compact one, and you'll find that this is actually uh, the aggregation uh, um, process using the 
PIF normalization. So here we simply multiply the A matrix by uh, D to the power uh, 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, and negative 0 0.5 here. And this is uh, this this basically represents this part uh, very easily. Okay, cool. So and uh, now. In addition to this, so you guys can see there are different variants. So sometimes we want to downweigh the, the contribution of the node itself. So we did this normalization, but later on we included the neighbors too. Now we can also uh, do a different approach, which is not based on um, normalization, but the max pooling. So we have seen max pooling uh, before um, use on um, we use it to transform to uh, transform the node embeddings of a graph onto a single node em embedding that represents the graph and this is for graph based learning or prediction. So here we can apply the same rule to the uh, the the nodes in the graph. So basically we can use max pooling uh, at each node at the node level to update the node embedding. So the max operator here will return the element-wise maximum of the embeddings that are neighbors to n. And I have explained this pre in the previous uh, video in detail, like what does it mean to take element-wise maximum, so the maximum value for uh, across all neighbors. So actually it's very simple. So you have a bunch of you know node embeddings. These are my neighbors, okay? So all these guys are my neighbors. And I look at the values right here, and I'm gonna take the max to do the max pooling. So if we have, for example, 0 0.5, eight and one, I'm gonna put eight right here, okay? So far, the previous aggregation methods, they consider only the neighbors of a particular node. So they consider them either equally or in a way that depends on the graph topology. Like for example, we take into account the degree of the node itself and also its neighbors. Uh, so this doesn't look or doesn't explore the relationship between the node embeddings themselves. So the node embeddings that we are learning can contribute somehow um, to um, uh, the aggregation process. So here, in this case, uh, we in this particular um, aggregation uh, paradigm, we're, we're going to use attention. So we're going to pay attention to uh, important embedding dimensions in the aggregation process. So in this case, the aggregation will depend on both the node embeddings and also the local topology. So the rule here is to first transform the embeddings and then pay attention. So if you have um, guys um, heard about attention before, so attention is um, a, a very important concept that spanned the field of transformers. There was a paper published a few years ago go, called um, Attention is All You Need, and that paper is a landmark prime paper that started the process or the, uh, the, the idea of uh, adding attention layers into deep learning networks and also graph neural networks. So the idea is actually very simple here. So first, uh, instead of aggregating, then transforming the features, we will first linearly transform the embeddings uh, of a current node as follows. So we will apply the embeddings to the, um, we will apply the transformation omega k at layer k to the embeddings in that layer, and then add the bias as we did before. So here, this will give us or produce h prime. h prime is the transformed um, embeddings, okay? So here we do the transformation of the embeddings first. And um, this example shows this. This is from the um, uh, chapter 13 in the textbook, uh, Understanding Deep Learning by Simon Prince. And uh, in this chapter, basically uh, in this section, we uh, go over the attention mechanism. So, uh, so the idea is very simple. First, we start with our input data. Okay, so we have our input data, D by N. So D is the number of original features and N the number of samples or nodes in the graph. And then we transform, we apply our transformation. So we have our transformed uh, feature matrix, or these are uh, the embeddings right here. And then what we do, we can combine uh, these two, the adjacency, the um, uh, adjacency including self connections. So this is the A path that we used before. Okay, and this allows us to aggregate these uh, to do the local aggregation uh, guided by the topology of the graph. So. Uh, and this will give us basically the, the updated, the output um, embedding. And uh, of course, we need to have the 
activation function like right here. Okay, so this is the activation function, the nonlinearity that we have introduced. So we have seen all of this uh, before, like the, the, the same concepts. So uh, next, the most uh, the new idea here is to introduce what we call a similarity matrix. So this similarity matrix, it will allow us to learn or estimate a similarity, okay, which we call a pre-attention matrix, a pre-attention matrix that will uh, will encode that encodes basically the pairwise similarity between different nodes. For example, node M and node uh, N here, okay. So, uh, or we can read it in the other way. So M, N, so M, N, N. And uh, how do we actually calculate this uh, pre-attention matrix or node-to-node -node similarity matrix? So we uh, take the learned embeddings, the transformed embeddings H prime of node M and the transformed embedding of uh, node N, okay? And we stack them together. So we do the stacking and when we stack them, so we have this, a vector right here, and then what we uh, we do is like we simply if we 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 need to define a um, a phi vector at layer k. So this phi vector uh, is a column vector that we transposed here, and uh, when we do this multiplication, it will give it will give us a single value. So that value is a similarity value. So if we do basically phi is equal to one, so we're going to simply average all the values here of both embeddings of two nodes, node M and a node N, okay, two neighboring nodes. Now, phi is, could be also learnable, so we can optimize phi, we can learn, you know, the similarity between uh, these embeddings, so phi can uh, become a learnable uh, a parameter or a learnable mapping vector of these uh, pairwise similarities uh, that will allow us to you know, learn the pre-attention matrix and not simply predefine it in a fixed way. So we can define the phi and we can learn the phi and uh, mostly we do the learning of the phi because it gives us better uh, similarity matrices, okay? So now this similarity matrix, once we get the similarity matrix, uh, we need to define uh, the uh, final attention weight. So now basically what we've done here We've taken uh, the input data, we transformed it using our transformation, right? So we got the transformed uh, input um, embedding. So we have here uh, the uh, transformed data. And then what we do, we apply a pre-attention um, to, this, to this data. So we apply a pre-attention uh, mechanism by multiplying uh, the X prime by S. So I'll explain how this is done. So this is done basically through a soft mask function. So the soft mask function takes uh, as inputs the similarity matrix that we learned and the, um, the A um, hat matrix right here. And it will use the topology of the A hat to do the aggregation that is weighted by the similarity. So now our aggregation will be weighted by the similarity that we have learned. And this similarity basically is the pre-attention. So the output of the soft uh, mask right here will give us the final attention mechanism that we will use to do the, um, the aggregation of the transformed features. And then once we do the final aggregation, then we will apply our nonlinearity over here. So the steps are very similar to what we have seen before. Now, uh, this is called the graph attention uh, network. And uh, let us see how this works. So basically, now we take the transform. So these are the transformed uh, embeddings of the previous layer of layer K, and we want to move from, from layer K to K plus one. So this is the update rule that we have seen before, but here there's a tweak where we add this soft mat mask function that takes in the similarity matrix, okay, that we have learned. So it takes in our similarity matrix. And from this similarity matrix, we apply what we call an attention, uh, sorry, a soft max, okay? So the soft max is applied uh, uh, separately to each column of the first argument, which is the um, the S matrix. So we apply the soft max to each uh, column of this matrix. And we also uh, set, so for the second argument here, so there is something that happens here, I'll, I'll tell you about it in a second. So here we apply the nonlinearity, uh, which is a soft max to S, all right? And then uh, for the second argument, 
the second argument right here, we will set, um, we will replace zero to negative infinity. So uh, if we have in this A hat matrix, if we have any disconnected nodes, okay? So for example, these nodes, uh, these two nodes are disconnected. So they're not connected in the graph. So let's say node, um, for example, two, and node four, okay? So we have node two and four, they're not connected. They have a zero, they don't have a connection. So we're going to replace this with a negative infinity. So why we're doing that? We're doing that because this will uh, ensure that the attention that we're learning uh, doesn't go to none uh, neighbors. So it will only be uh, focusing, the attention will only take into account the immediate neighbors uh, of the node, and we will not care about nodes that are not connected to the current node for the the uh, for the update of the embedding. Okay, so that's the the key idea here. And uh, after basically you do this uh, multiplication, so we need to multiply s by uh, we do an element wise multiplication uh, of uh, S by the A hat, let's call it infinity, where we did this uh, post processing, okay? And then uh, basically uh, this will get us the A, uh, the, uh, the sigmoid applied to S multiplied uh, element wise multiplication by A hat infinity, okay? So this will be the output of the soft mask and then the output of the soft mask if we go back here uh, is the attention that we have so it's the attention matrix and now we're going to take the attention matrix and uh, multiply it by x uh, prime which is the transformed um, emb um, embeddings or uh, in the uh, in the previous layer right here k right so these are transformed embeddings here so we're going to do the um, uh, element wise multiplication, the matrix multiplication, and apply a nonlinearity and get the final output. So this is how we update basically the uh, embeddings using an attention mechanism. So the graph attention network combines both, uh, you know, two mechanisms. So the weights are both computed from the data. So we have the weights that we're learning for the aggregation are calculated from the embeddings because we're using the attention uh, similarity, um, the pretense and similarity matrix S, and also based on the adjacency matrix or the graph topology, because we are doing this element-wise multiplication right here to do the aggregation. Remember when you multiply by A or, uh, you know, like the inverse of D and A, so the normalized versions of A, so that's the aggregation process. So here we're doing the S multiplication by A for aggregating, and S presents a pre-attention, then we do this kind of sigmoid to we apply it to S, the soft max, to make sure uh, that we know uh, we, we we cap uh, the values uh, at one and we zero the non-important values. So we want our S to be sparse. We don't want to keep the, the, the far away neighbors. We want to focus on the locally uh, strong similarities and the locally strong uh, neighborhoods, okay? So S here with a sigmoid uh, function becomes a uh, sort of a sparse matrix. So this sigmoid, uh, sparsifies as where we focus only on the mostly connected, you know, uh, uh, the 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 uh, connected, the highly connected nodes in the network. Okay, so these are strongly connected. All right, cool. Very good, so that was it for the aggregation method. So we have visited different aggregation methods that could be used at both local and uh, global levels for node-based aggregation and graph-based aggregation.